This is your Estuary Report. I'm Jerry Kay. Most of our urban systems are basically designed for flood control. They're designed to get every single storm event sort of off the site as fast as possible. What rain gardens do is they actually slow the water down, allow for natural treatment to take place, and also sort of take some of those peak runoff flows and volumes out of the system, which impact the bay and receiving creeks in a physical sense as well. And so cumulatively, I think they can make a big difference. And the nice thing is it's incorporated into the natural landscaping that we're already doing. With rain gardens, you're sort of being a little more thoughtful about what you're doing. It's not just a landscape for a landscape case, but you're actually getting some water quality treatment out of it, making the landscape work for you. A lot of natural processes that we sort of take for granted in many cases provide natural treatment functions. Soil, plants actually treat water before it's discharged to the bay in this case. Um, they take up nutrients, they take up uh, sediment, you know, some of the things from the urban landscape are treated very nicely by, by the rain garden. What it really has to do is allow water to sort of detain water for a specific amount of time to allow for those natural treatment processes to, to occur. It's important to be able to get some drainage after say 24 to 48 hours. So we do have to be aware of what type of underlying soil there is. I mean, really tight clay is not ideal for a rain garden. We need to have some kind of drainage. And the plants also need to be adapted to frequent ponding. I mean, we can't just put sort of an upland species of grass in a rain garden and expect it to do well. You know, a lot of the plants we use for rain gardens are sort of naturally uh, adapted to floodplain environments, areas that frequently get flooded with water. Out here at City Hall in El Cerrito, we have things like Berkeley sedge, deer grass, things that, that can tolerate periodic wetting and survive very well. So if you're going to design a rain garden, you basically want it to be below the grade of the sidewalk. There are other ways to build sort of a berm in there, but it's important to create that sort of concave shape to be able to detain water. They don't need to be complicated. Uh, they need to be sized to essentially treat a certain volume of stormwater, and that's highly dependent on the area of the roof draining to the rain garden, the amount of pavement or what we call impervious surface draining to that area. So there is sort of some volume, some simple math involved, but you can pretty much um, design them pretty easily. The important thing to remember is that we all live in a watershed and all of our stormwater runoff is going to eventually drain into the bay. And so if we can somehow detain that runoff coming off of our site and keeping it from coming in contact with polluted surfaces like parking lots, roads, which have a lot of oils, metals on them, which can be mobilized during stormwater runoff, if we can basically store that runoff on site and get it infiltrated back in the ground, we're basically reducing a lot of pollutants at the source. And that's really the most effective way of minimizing pollution in the bay is really sort of starting at the source. One of the important points here is that we really have to sort of be more thoughtful about the landscapes that we're putting in. If we do it right, we can accomplish a lot of different really good things. I mean, one is water conservation. There's a really big push statewide is to, to minimize the amount of water we use for landscaping. If you design things like rain gardens and use plants that are adapted to our Mediterranean climate, we can add wildlife habitat. We have a shortage of pollinators now. I mean, we can, if we do it right, we can put in plants that are really good for bees and other pollinators. A lot of our food supply depends on these pollinators. We can put trees in rain gardens, which create shade, which filter, give us air pollution benefits. And so there's just a lot of things that we can do if we focus in on the landscape. Multi-purpose is really what it's all about. And we can make our landscape do a lot of really good societal things for us if we're thoughtful about it. If you'd like more information about this topic, please visit our website, sfestuary.org. For the San Francisco Estuary Partnership, I'm Jerry Kay.